Welcome to the My Art Broker podcast. Today we are delving into the world of consignment. We'll be talking about everything from fair market value, expert valuations, provenance, condition and authenticity. And there is no better guest than our very own Louis Denizet, our Head of Acquisitions. Hello Louis. Hi Charlotte, thank you so much for having me. This is exciting. Thanks so much for being here. Now, Louis, for those that have not yet met you either by phone or by face, give us a little bit of 101 of who Louis is and how you have become such an expert in this field. Sure. So um, I am, contrary to my accent, I'm French um, and uh, I grew up in the States. I studied art history. I have two masters in art history. I have one from the Louvre and one from King's College here in London. I started out by working in a major auction house. I was a researcher and a data analyst. I worked in the contemporary department, which was really fascinating because um, I, as part of my job, I had to go through all of the cat reses for all of the major artists. Um, sold in the modern and contemporary departments. So I got to actually have a look at and study every single artwork ever produced by given artists. So um, that was really helpful. And um, then I moved on to working for Artsy for a number of years. I started off by working in their auctions departments. And then I moved on to private sales, um, worked on the gallery side of things for a little bit. And then I made my way over here. And um, yeah, now I'm head of acquisitions um, at my art broker. My specialty is American pop. So um, if you have any questions whatsoever about anything from Warhol, Herring, uh, Liechtenstein, Wesselman, I'm your person. Amazing. I think we're going to start by talking a little bit about how we come how we come to evaluation. What's the process that you take? And I suppose what would be really helpful is to talk a little bit about where the difference lies between when you come up with evaluation for a print or multiple versus an original? Of course. Well, I'm so, as I'm sure that you can imagine, um, it's, it's wildly different, of course. Um, and there are many different ways of valuing an, an artwork. I constantly have collectors coming up to me saying, oh, I showed my artwork to this gallery and they quoted me this number. And then I went to my broker and they quoted me this other number. So what is it truly worth? I think that there's a lot of confusion and naturally, you know, most collectors want to hear bigger numbers. That makes sense. Everybody wants to, uh, you know, think that their artwork is worth a whole lot of money. Um, but there is a little bit of a science to it, actually. And um, there are a few things that are important to bear in mind when asking for evaluation. So first of all, if you have an artwork and that you're looking to have it insured, you know, there is such a thing as an insurance value. And that is, that refers to the value of your artwork. If God forbid your house burns down and that the artwork needed to be replaced. So in many ways that is comparable to the true value of your artwork. Now, of course, it's a free market. So you can always go to a gallery and a gallery might quote you a slightly higher number based on what they can think, what they think, excuse me, they can sell it for. And then there are a number of online platforms where you can list your artwork yourself. And quite frankly, I mean, you know, you're more than welcome to list it for whatever price you want, but that doesn't mean that you're actually going to sell it either rapidly or even ever. So it's important to know who to go to when you're thinking about potentially selling an artwork, or if you just want to know the true value um, of your piece. And how might somebody prepare for that process? How might somebody get that work ready in order to send it over to somebody who's gonna give them a valuation? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, there are a few things to bear in mind. First of all, you might want to start by taking some photos of your artwork, not just you know, low definition photos of the artwork hanging on your wall with, you know, your children play playing in the background and all that, you know, take some nice photos, take some nice um, up close, high resolution photos, get all of those little details, things like signatures, um, stamps, any labels that might be on the back of the work, um, edition information, you know, get some photos of that because that's going to be incredibly helpful for the person who's going to be valuing your artwork. Also, make sure that you keep all of the paperwork associated to it. 
whether that is a certificate of authenticity, or if you don't have that, some sort of proof of purchase, an invoice, a receipt, anything at all. Keep the paperwork. It is so important. So many people, you know, think that the paperwork isn't important. And, uh, you know, I'm constantly talking to people who received artwork um, uh, as a gift or via inheritance, um, anything at all, every little piece, uh, scrap of paper counts and matters. And please keep it, photograph it, because that might make a big difference in the valuation that you will receive. And then you might want to think about a few other details like condition, authenticity, all of that. But we can touch on that later if you want. And what do I do, Louis, if I don't have any paperwork? What if it was gifted to me? What if I've lost the paperwork? What other, and does that basically send it into a spin of not being able to achieve the value that it should be worth or other things that I can do? Yes and no. So no, if you don't have the paperwork, if you don't have any paperwork whatsoever, that doesn't mean that your artwork is automatically devoid of any value whatsoever. That's, that's not the case at all. However, it might be more difficult to sell and it might sell for less than another artwork that does have paperwork associated to it. So if you don't have anything at all, what I would start by doing is talk to an expert, talk to a specialist who might be able to give you some advice. Uh, generally, what that expert will tell you is, well, if it was um, a recent purchase, then you might be able to contact the place where the artwork was originally sold and they might provide you with some paperwork. If the artwork was purchased many, many years ago, you might be able to go speak to um, another institution that might be able to provide you with some paperwork. So for example, if you own a Keith Haring work, but that you don't have a COA or a proof of purchase, you might want to get in touch with the Keith Haring Foundation and they might be able to authenticate the work for you and to provide you with some paperwork. If you have a Banksy and that you do not have pest control, and once again, pest control is uh, the certificate of authenticity that goes along with the artworks for Banksy, um, get in touch with them and explain to them when you purchased the artwork, where you purchased the artwork, how much you purchased the artwork for, and uh, they might be able to do some research on the piece and uh, they might be able to provide you with pest control. And when you're looking at um, all the documents that are given to you and an artwork and the photographs of an artwork or seeing it in person, what are you looking for in terms of all that paperwork in really simplistic terms? Well, simply put, um, I just want to know where the artwork comes from. So I need, you know, the name of a place, when the artwork was purchased, who the artwork was sold to, and therefore who the artwork legally belongs to um so that you can verify it, it so that you can verify it's real it's the real deal Abs correct? absolutely 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 because there are some places that we know are official institutions that have sold authentic prints and multiples by specific artists whereas mm -hmm. other places might not be actually authorized institutions. exactly <laughs> I think this is a really important point, and I think sometimes these conversations can be quite difficult. I think it's particularly frustrating if if you've had a work that's been gifted to you or you've inherited it and you don't have that paperwork. And I think sometimes, um, and tell me if you agree, these conversations feel like there's a sort of fact check going on. But actually what we're trying to do is ensure that you get the correct return for your artwork, because without these pieces of information, you won't be able to realize it, will you? Absolutely. Absolutely. That is absolutely accurate. Paperwork is so crucial. And ultimately, it really is about keeping you out of any legal trouble and also just getting you, uh, you, you know, the, uh, the best deal possible for your artwork. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's get into the numbers. So an artwork with good provenance with good paperwork that everything checks out and it's beautifully kept and preserved in good condition. How do you come up with that value? What, what factors do you take into account? Yeah. So a great question. It's important to keep an eye on the market. It's important to keep an eye specifically on, on auction results. So let's imagine that you own 
a Mick Jagger print by Andy Warhol. And let's imagine that one of them is sold in a major, major auction house and reaches a record-breaking price at auction. Um, that's, that's your window of opportunity to get your artwork valued because all of a sudden, the value of your artwork uh, will have appreciated, perhaps rather drastically. So keep an eye out on how artworks have been doing at auction Something to bear in mind is the hammer price that an artwork was sold at doesn't necessarily mean what the buyer paid for it or what the seller received as payment. Because as we all know, um, in auction houses, there are buyer's premiums, there is a seller's commission, there are service fees associated to it that have to be paid for by the seller. But have a look at that hammer price. What did the artwork hammer at? That's going to give you a good idea. If you have a look at, at you know, at recent auction results in the past year or perhaps two years, have a look at what the artwork has hammered at. That's going to give you a pretty good idea of what the artwork is worth. It's mm -hmm. better to do that than to go up to a gallery and to ask them, how much are you selling your Mick Jagger for? Because, you know, at that specific gallery, there's there isn't necessarily going to be any regulation on the price point that gallery is going to quote you a price that they think that they can sell it at based off of their network of collectors if they know that they have you know a core group of collectors who uh, are avid Andy Warhol collectors and Mick Jagger fans and that they can sell it for uh, a price point that is above market value then of course that's what they're going to do once again it's it's a free market you're more than welcome to do that. And also, I wouldn't go on the internet. The internet is not necessarily a good source of information for these things. You know, it's kind of like when you get sick and you go on WebMD and then you go to the doctor and the doctor says, why did you go on WebMD? Why did you follow those sets of rules? So it's the exact same thing. Um, have a look at how pieces have been doing at auction, major auction houses specifically, but 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 not only. And then based on the results that you found, bear that in mind, and then go speak to a specialist. And that specialist will be able to tell you, well, the general trend for the specific artist or for this specific series of artworks um, is on the rise. So, you know, this is where we think your artwork sits at the moment. Or on the contrary, they might be able to, set, to say, well, despite a very good auction result, unfortunately, other pieces from the same series have not achieved the same number. And therefore, we think it's best if you if you want to sell your artwork um, to position it around this number instead of that one. Mm -hmm. I think these are really good points. And I think going, I, I love that analogy of, of going to sort of Google your health concern without speaking to a doctor or a specialist. It's very true. I think people do often need to do their homework, don't they? And um, you see a huge amount of pricing out there that's huge, that fluctuates massively. Um, and I think, you know, particularly a high street galleries, as you say, and, and I just, I want to make it clear that, you know, that the high street gallery is one of the, the largest commission um, spaces. So when you see something up at a certain price, it's not that they're going to return you more, it's that they're going to charge a larger commission um, in, in the majority um, of cases. Um, I think when you when you talk about auctions, um, we have this conversation a lot with clients, don't we? They see they see a result. It includes buyer's premium, which is twenty five percent, or sometimes a little below, a little higher, and then there's VAT on top of that. So you're seeing an inflated price, and also you're not seeing the fees that the seller pays, um, which can be you know fifteen percent or more. Um, so that person's actually returning a lot less than the hammer price, exactly as you say. I mean. As much as one can't go online, I think what we've tried to provide at my art broker is, is as much stripped back data as possible um, mm -hmm. and give you latest auction prices. But I think the key here is that only about 40%, it's estimated that about 40% of sales of prints and multiples go through public auction. So you're mm -hmm. not seeing any of that 60% of the market. Um, and when you speak to someone like yourself, who's worked at Sotheby's, that's worked at Artsy, you've got somebody who has a huge amount of knowledge about what's going on in the private marketplace, which is sometimes a much better picture of the real fair market value. I'm, I'm really fascinated by this, um, this concept of fair market value because there's so much to play there, isn't there? I mean, you know, there's, 
there's conditions, even if let's say you've got a market like the Banksy prints market, which over the last two, three years has been incredibly active. So you've got a lot of prints going through and actually it's so easy, isn't it? To make a valuation on, on a, on a print that's been sold multiple times. Um, and, and prints themselves are perhaps a little easier than originals because we have those comparables in the marketplace. Where do you start with a print? And this is a tricky question. So <laughs> where do you start with a print that has comparables, but maybe not for 20 years, 30 years? What are the things in the marketplace? Do you look at the, the artist market trend? Do you look at the series overall? Do you look at similar series? Where do you start when you don't have a base of knowledge of comparables in that particular series? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it happens all the time, all the time. Um, you know, it's it's really on a case by case basis. The process is always a little bit different, right? Um, once again, my background is as a researcher, so obviously a whole lot of research goes into the valuation process. So I guess that the first question that I'm interested in is well, how much did you purchase the artwork for originally? Many, many collectors don't necessarily want to share that information. And that's a shame because if you're talking to a specialist, you want to share as much information as possible. You know, it's again, it's like going to the doctor and just sharing all of your symptoms. Don't hold back. There's really no point. The doctor knows what's best, <laughs> right? So, you know, once again, I want to know how much you, you purchased the artwork for originally. That's going to be my first question. A lot of collectors, you know, especially Banksy collectors, they'll be a little bit, um, they'll almost like whisper it. They'll say, oh, you know, I, I purchased it from pictures on walls for a hundred quid, but maybe don't tell anybody that. And it's like, yes, I know. <laughs> I was around back then. I remember seeing them for a hundred pounds and, and thinking to myself, should I get one? <laughs> and then sub two. Um, so it depends. Is the print um, based off of an original artwork and that specific original artwork has it been very present in the secondary markets do we have any information there um you know if, if for example you own an andy warhol print featuring um you know iconic subject matter then it's most likely that there will be an original artwork associated to it and there might be some uh, auction results associated to that piece and that might inform us on the demand for the original piece and therefore the prints which will impact the, the value of that print if we don't have any of that um naturally i'll be looking at um uh comps so you know there are specific groups of artists sometimes you can group them together you know uh that that's what happened with uh ybas for example so if i were if i were to look at specific prints from the ybas i would have a look at how other artists from that group have been performing on the market and what their pieces have been selling for you obviously want to be comparing you know if we're talking about auctions you want to look at what the auction estimates were, the low estimate and the high estimate, and how the auction results compared to those estimates. Are we consistently looking at hammer prices that are um, uh, below the low estimate or above the high estimate? All of those things will inform, will inform me about things like whether a demand for that print is strong or not, and what we can reasonably achieve in terms of sales for that specific print. And based off of that information, I will be able to provide you with either a range or what we think, you know, if it's a private sale, what we think we can net back to you from that sale. Brilliant. And what about condition? So obviously that affects things hugely. And sometimes when people are looking at data, they're looking at a, a combination of works that are in immaculate condition and in less than immaculate condition. If I know my print is not in the best condition, what might I do? Condition is key. It is paramount. Before I told you that paperwork was important, but nothing in comparison to condition. Condition is the number one important uh, thing. Um, you know, when you're when you're looking to sell an artwork, especially a print. I mean. 
think about it, if you own an Andy Warhol Prince in an edition of 250 and that yours is subpar, um, you know, think about it. There are 249 other prints out there that are potentially in better condition. So mm -hmm. why would a collector buy yours that has foxing and uh, that's all undulated and yellowed when they can get a beautiful pristine one for a fair market value so condition is key i mean you know i've once been told that uh when you're thinking about purchasing property you always have to think about location location is key people always say location 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 well in our industry in our business you know we always say condition 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 so First of all, when you're thinking about having an artwork appraised, or if you're thinking about selling it, have a look at it, try and assess the condition of the piece, rely on your own knowledge, just, just, to, just to see um, if you think that the piece is in good enough condition to have it sold, you know, have a look out for things like uh, have the colors altered over the years, has the paper yellowed, um, is there any water damage, any humidity damage? any foxing, any, any molding even, just uh, have a look at these things. And if you notice anything at all, definitely, definitely bring it to a uh, conservator. They might be able to assess the condition of the piece and to propose some treatments. You know, there are so many things that we can do nowadays to make a piece look as good as new. I mean, truly, I have seen absolute miracles happening. Pieces that I thought were just, you know, far gone, destroyed, um, you'd be very surprised and impressed by what is possible nowadays. So, you know, bring it to a conservator, have them assess the condition of your piece, trust them if they recommend any treatments. And no matter what the price is, you know, even if they're quoting you, you know, a thousand pounds or more, if that is going to double the value of your print, then it is worth it. If that is what will determine whether your print is worth 20,000 pounds or 40,000 pounds, do it. Just truly do not hesitate. Make sure that it's insured when you hand it off to that conservator, of course. Nevertheless, I would not hesitate at all. Mm -hmm. And then to answer the second part of your question in terms of what you can do to preserve your artwork, um, you know, naturally, once you receive a print, frame it and put it behind uh, a UV protected glass keep it out of the sun as much as possible. You know, just, just handle it with care and do a number of things that will ensure that the artwork can be either sold for the best price possible or that you can pass it down to your children, uh, gift it. You know, you, you obviously, a thing of beauty can be a joy forever. So just make sure that you take good care of it. I think that's really good advice. I think I would just add that Obviously, there are different levels of conservators, aren't there? Some that you know, tampering with tampering with a print of a certain age or a certain value must be done by the appropriate people. And I think that's something that you know we have several relationships with the best people in the marketplace. So, so do speak to us about that. I think the other thing when it comes to condition is, and tell me if you agree, Louis, is that if if something is in less than perfect condition auction can be a difficult game to play because you're sending it into a marketplace you don't know what's about to come up at another auction house um, and as you say very well put there's another 499 potentially perfect condition prints out there from the same series and if those come to market at the same time the chances of sending your less than perfect value print into auction at that time is that it won't sell and obviously if something doesn't sell at auction then it's burnt it's reputationally burnt and there may also be unsold fees on top so i always think that private sale particularly if something can be handled correctly and any work needed just you know, some light pressing is actually a brilliant solution for works that perhaps have not been kept exactly as they should do would you agree oh i i could not agree more i could not agree more absolutely if you have a print that is uh you know not an especially rare print you know if it's an edition of 250 plus um and that it is in good condition but not excellent condition and that you try to auction the piece 
and that you know you, you try to sell it with Bonhams and then Sotheby's comes out with the same piece um you know forgive me for the expression but you're sort of shooting yourself in the foot absolutely it's it's a huge risk to take if your print does not sell and, and as you know, when you sell a printed auction, then the edition number has to be revealed. It's all in, 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 in the catalog it's provided by the auction house. You know, if that doesn't sell, that means that that print, um, or rather the fact that it didn't sell, that is going to be documented. It's going to be recorded. It's going to go into a, a number of um, databases, um, you know, Artnet, uh, um, Artsy, all of that number of books where unfortunately um, it will be a known fact in uh, the art market that that specific print did not sell at that time for that price. So like you said, the, the work is burnt and it's, it'll just be more difficult to sell it in the future. So, you know, if that's the case, um, yeah, it might be a better option to explore private sales. That way everything is handled privately. All of your information remains confidential and, and there are no clashes, so to speak. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are several advantages. Um, and what about what about dedicated prints? So we, we quite often see um, works that have been signed or dedicated to somebody. How does that affect their value? Because that's quite an interesting one, depending on obviously what the dedication is. That's a very interesting one. Absolutely. Yes, definitely depends on who the dedication was from and who it is to. I mean, it, if, it, you know, if you have a print that was hand signed by both Andy Warhol and Jane Fonda, I mean, that's cool. fantastic. Jackpot. <laughs> you know, yes, cool. That's the, I love that word. <laughs> if, if the dedication was to a collector that isn't necessarily a known public figure, you know, might not have the same, the same worth or the same value, probably will still impact the value of your piece positively in the sense that, you know, there's a trace of the artist's hand and, uh, you know, definitely still something worth uh, having looked at by an expert. Absolutely. But something to bear in mind is, if the artwork was dedicated to you or I don't know, to your wife or to your husband or whatever. Well, if you're looking to sell it a few years after having received it, a few years after having it gifted to you by the artist, once again, going down the auction routes might not be the safest option. I don't know if Damien Hurst really wants to know that, I don't know, his good friend Joe that he gifted a whole series to, um, you know, auctioned it off two years later um, for, for a hefty amount. So mm -hmm. once again, it might be worth exploring private sales instead. Um, yes. That way, you know, no one, no one will be frustrated no one will be angry. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's a many advantages. And, and, and with my art broker, obviously, we're able to market the work without giving that information away until we have a, a qualified buyer who wants to know more, which I think, you know, is, is incredibly helpful. Um, so we talked a little bit earlier and I want to move on to consignment and the process at my art broker in particular, and maybe look at how it might be suitable for a majority of people, but how it might not be suitable. And I think we should be try and be as unbiased about that as possible. But before we do, we talked a little bit about how category trends, so the American pop market at the moment is, is very, very strong. Um, urban, con urban and contemporary, you've got some key players in there where the markets are steadily growing. Um, whereas you have other ones that perhaps, you know, it all comes down to scarcity, doesn't it? It all comes down to demand and supply and sometimes demand outstrips supply and vice versa. In the American pop market, what is what would you bring to market now? Let's say you've got a relatively large collection um, of American pop. You've got Warhol, you've got Basquiat, you've got Keith Haring, you've got Lichtenstein. What would you bring? What are we? What are you seeing at the moment in the market that is showing to have a lot of demand behind it, and and why? Obviously, the greats. Um, you, you said it yourself: Warhol, Haring, uh, Basquiat. Uh, demand is unwavering so if you if you have a warhol print you are one lucky collector but you are completely right when you say that there are specific trends so collectors currently are looking to acquire specific pieces or types of pieces more so than others so right now what we're witnessing is 
there is huge demand for complete sets, especially with matching edition numbers. That's really what is most sought after at the moment, almost as much as originals. There are a number of collectors who are looking to acquire. Let, let's talk about Andy Warhol, since you mentioned Andy Warhol previously. Um, you know, Andy Warhol had a number of, of, uh, uh, of portfolios, including endangered species or, um, you know, his ads. I think that right now, endangered species especially is very appealing to a lot of people because obviously that series tackles issues such as climate change, which is a very, uh, you know, uh, current issue that is in the forefront of our minds. And um, so in case you're not familiar with the series, it's, it's a number of prints that feature, well, endangered species such as the black rhino and uh, zebra, um, specific types of butterflies, things like that. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful series. And uh, while it might be, <clears throat> I suppose, um, possible to compile every single print um, from a different place, from a, with, with like different provenance and with a different edition number, um, you know, what is most prized is a complete set with matching edition numbers. That's really what collectors want to get their hands on. So, and the, and the, yeah. the, 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 it's so rare to see, isn't it? I mean, I think what's fascinating about the difference between um, bringing um, a, a Warhol set together to the market compared to bringing something more contemporary is that the, the chances of seeing something that's been kept together in such great condition are so small because these prints were these prints were you know flung into the back of cars they were they were gifted out after parties they were you know there's there's such a difference um to how we now buy contemporary prints of major established blue chip artists. We know what we're buying. I mean, it's the same could be said about the Banksy market, the Bristol market stall. You know, you, you didn't know what you were necessarily taking away with you. Um, so, I mean, they're, they're just absolute treasures when they're found, aren't they? Things like that. They absolutely are. Absolutely. A, a complete set with matching edition numbers in excellent condition um, is so rare to come across. Um, that's really what collectors want to get their hands on at, at the moment. Um, you, you know, every now and then you will come across a complete set where, um, you know, every single piece has a different condition report. And so some of them might be in excellent condition. Some of them might be in fair condition. Um, that's not to say that it's not a beautiful set and that you shouldn't, um, acquire it, but uh, it's always a little bit disappointing. Collectors want everything to be pristine in, in quasi mint condition. So yeah, if you come across a complete set, you're in luck. I think what's also, as we're talking about um, Warhol's sets and, and the series that resonate in the market at the moment, I think what's fascinating about Warhol's portfolio is how, and I say it all the time, how relevant certain topics are. And there is a, there is a topicality of the market. So there's obviously the market trend, but endangered species, also the ladies and gentlemen series, which was never that popular, um, is now one that's being looked at a lot more thoroughly and exhibited because it is it tackles a gender issue that is particularly pertinent in the modern day. Whereas, you know, there are the sort of hero series I mean, Warhol's Marilyn is always going to be. But then sometimes I find that these particular iconic images, they're almost reproduced so often that the real treasure for collectors can be in these, you know, the ad series is, is a fantastic series. And there are people that absolutely feel passionately about certain ad prints um, from that series. And they're iconic, but they're not as reproduced as mm -hmm. the hero prints. Are they? There's something a little bit more special about learning about the series, and the demand for that can come quite, can almost become cyclical in the cyclical in the marketplace. <clears throat> so many of these artists um, <clears throat> were visionaries, and you know they tackled issues that are still at the forefront of our minds. I mean, you know, Keith Haring addressed a number of issues such as, you know, LGBTQIA plus rights racial equality, um, once again, HIV prevention and, and protection, all of these all of these issues that are still so relevant today. And I think that that's, uh, you know, one of the reasons why collectors are still looking to acquire all of their pieces. So Louis, finally, let's delve into, 
our consignment process and perhaps other consignment processes and what how it works at my art broker and why there might be an advantage or a disadvantage for a seller so if you are looking to consign an artwork with my art broker um a few things to bear in mind are <clears throat> what's going to happen is the process is that i'm going to start by asking you for some photos of your piece as well as any provenance information. So if you can just snap some photos, um, find that COA or that proof of purchase and just send it my way, you know, just an electronic copy uh, is enough. And the photos don't have to be in excellent quality or anything like that. Just, you know, send that information my way so that I can have a look and I can basically come up with a preliminary opinion about your piece. Then we can have a conversation on the phone and uh, we can talk about how much you want to uh, net from the sale of that piece. So I will obviously provide you with a sales valuation based off of the research that I've done. I'll have a look at recent auction results. Um, I will obviously draw from my personal knowledge, um, you know, bear bearing in mind things like specific trends in the market, demand for pieces, artists, etc. What we think that we can sell in a timely manner and for how much. And once I've provided you with that valuation, you know, you can tell me if you're happy to move forward or not. If you do choose to move forward, what I will do is I will send you a seller's agreement. And that seller's agreement is a three page document where we will, you know, add all of the catalog cataloging details of the piece. And essentially what that document is, it's just a document where you give us the legal right to sell your piece for a limited amount of time for a specific amount that we have both mutually agreed upon prior to uh, sending off the seller's agreements. So, you know, what that means is I might tell you your print is worth 50,000 pounds, but I have a number of collectors who are looking to acquire this piece, and we believe that we can reasonably achieve a price point perhaps slightly above market value. If you're happy to consign this piece with me, then legally you're giving me the right to market your piece for, say, about two months. And if I manage to find a buyer for that piece, you are giving me the right to sell it for you and to return X amounts back to you into your bank account. That's mm -hmm. what it means. Mm -hmm. And so... Once I've sent out that seller's agreement and that you have completed your AML checks, very important, let's, let's all stay safe. Um, what I'll do is I will send an art handler to your doorstep to pick up the piece and to bring it to one of our conservators. The piece will be professionally deframed if necessary and a full condition report will be compiled. If any treatment is necessary, then we will be informed of that in the condition report and I might make some recommendations. And, uh, you know, once we get the green light that the piece is authentic in excellent condition, then we can start marketing the piece for a network of collectors and to make a sale happen. And once that's done, you will receive payments via bank transfer. So you'll get the amount straight back into your bank accounts um, and there will be no surprises. It'll be that number that you and I have both mutually agreed upon because once again, contrary to auction, I'm not providing you with a range. We're not setting a reserve price. We don't charge a seller's commission. There are no service fees, none of that. Um, contrary to auction, where they might tell you, your piece is worth 30 to 50,000 pounds. We'll set the reserve at 28,000 pounds. And of mm -hmm. course, once sold we'll take a 15 percent seller's commission and of course you'll have to pay for um you know shipping and insurance and um gee i don't know uh, uh we'll put it in storage, storage for two weeks pay for storage yeah, yeah. Okay. um yeah. you know so at the end of the day if you sell the piece for i don't know let's let's say somewhere within that range so if you sell it for thirty five thousand pounds you might have to cough up you know a pretty hefty amount. I, I would say, with with everything that I've mentioned, I would say that you would you would probably you're probably looking to net at maybe twenty five thousand pounds straight back into your bank account. So if you go through us and that we tell you, well, considering that another piece recently sold for, I don't know, say thirty thousand pounds, 
um, and that we have two collectors in our network who are currently looking to acquire the piece, which is great because, um, you know, we might present it to both collectors and we'll see who wants it more. Um, in that case, we might tell you, well, we, we, can, we can promise that we can return 35,000 pounds straight back into your bank account. Well, that's an extra 10K that you wouldn't have gotten if you had sold it at auction. It's quite a compelling um, model, I think. And, you know, both you and I, Louis, have worked in the auction world. So we've we've seen firsthand, um, you know, the selling process and the consignment process. And I think what's really important about um, this process in the prints and multiples category, particularly, is that you know, there are great reasons. I don't want us to bang on about how auction isn't always sometimes a better route, you know, particularly with the originals market and evening sales. Um, there are many reasons why you might want to send, sell an original through my art broker as well. But with the print, the reality is, is that you're in that core market section. So you're going to be asked to, to lower your reserve in order to get bidding up. You're going mm. to be asked to do that. Um, but the problem with that is that you have to then be very comfortable that the work may sell at reserve because you don't know what else is going to pop up in the market. You know, you don't know that there's another sale two weeks later with exactly the same print in it or heaven forbid one in immaculate condition, as we said before, and yours is not. Um, so you don't really know what's going to happen on the night. And I think, you know, what certainly drew me very originally to my art broker was the solution that it offers, the transparency that it offers. You know, if the, what's the price that is agreed between us and the vendor is the full price that will go into your bank account when the artwork is sold. Um, and also we only take works on that we know that we can sell. So, you know, one, if we don't sell it, there's absolutely no risk is there I hate using the term but it's sort of no win no fee isn't it which is so different from the auction model so different from the auction model um so yeah I'd like I'd like to think it's probably the most streamlined um and most transparent possible way of selling an artwork in the current market I think a lot of people you know since they are more um, familiar with with auctions and big names, you know, Sotheby's, Christie's, Phillips, Bonhams, you know, they're going to think to themselves, might as well start by trying to sell my piece at auction. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't sell, maybe that I'll explore the private sale route. But actually, you might as well just do the opposite. Because if you start by uh, consigning your artwork with, for example, my art broker, what's going to happen is, you're going to enter an agreement where you know exactly how much you'll be selling the artwork for. There's no surprise there. We will consign the piece. Generally, it's it's for about 60 days. Um, and if the piece does not sell, once again, we will return the piece back to you in the exact same condition that you gave it to us in, along with the condition report that we've compiled. You will not have spent any money whatsoever. None of that, you know, none of your confidential information will be um, uh, shared publicly. So the artwork will not be burnt. So there's literally nothing to lose. Like you said, there's no risk. Um, chances are that within two months, you will have sold the work for no fees whatsoever. And, you know, something else to it that's important to bear in mind is on my art broker, we wouldn't consign a piece. We wouldn't take it in if we didn't think that we could sell it because consigning a piece comes at a hefty cost to us. Absolutely. I mean, we, of course, we have to pay for shipping and insurance and, uh, you know, for the condition report to be compiled and then for the storage space. We and pay for all time and our specialist time. You know, that we often say this, don't we? It's, it's not, we don't have a buyer for it. Let's not consign it. And I think that's really, really important. And, and if we don't sell it, then by all means, take the auction route. Exactly, exactly. So if it doesn't sell, then two months later, you'll get the piece back, you won't have spent any money, and then you can explore other avenues, of course. Nothing to lose, nothing, nothing to, to lose. And, and plenty to gain. Um, Louis, thank you so much. I think it's been really informative um, for everybody. And I'm sure we should just stress that you're always on the end of the telephone if anybody wants to discuss anything more personal to their own collection. Absolutely, absolutely. I always say, 
my favorite thing is um, valuing artworks. I just think it's fascinating. So if you're ever just curious about the value of your piece, just give me a call. I would be delighted to have a look and uh, give you my opinion on it. So yeah, don't be shy. Wonderful. Thanks, Louis. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Charlotte. Bye-bye.